All right, well, and for the last time, uh, that is the news, as we've tried our best to present it to you over these past 40 years. On behalf of all of us here at NJN News, and as always, that's both in front of and behind the cameras, I'd like to thank the people of New Jersey for the honor and the privilege of bringing you the slices of life, there goes that quaking voice, that we've been fortunate enough as journalists to bring to you. And on that note, and with proper due deference, I'd like to turn it back over to my friend and mentor, Michael Aaron, Mr. NJN, to give us the final words, Michael, under the banner of NJN News. That's only proper. That's the way it should be. Thank you, Jim. That's it for NJN News. They say all good things come to an end, and they do. They say that life is change, and it is. Thanks to all the people who have called and written this week to say they'll miss us. And good luck to our cousins at WNET and their new endeavor, NJTV. With that, let's take one last look at the Trenton Newsroom, where so many good New Jersey stories were screened, written, and edited. It's a good show. Everyone in theater is profoundly grateful to either appear on or watch Theater Talk. This is probably the only thing <laughs> worth watching on television. Coming up next on NJN. Deaf and hard of hearing can reach us by calling the TTY phone number at 609-292-5000. Coming up on Theater Talk... A bald eagle flies over the Sapano Meadows National Wildlife Refuge in Salem County. 3,000 acres of marshes, grasslands, and forests make up this track. Thousands of wading shorebirds that use nearby Peapatch Island in the Delaware Bay feed at this refuge. It's also home to a unique colony of brown bats that use this old barn during the summer months for shelter. It's mostly a maternity colony where the, the females come to have their babies, and it's mostly females and, and young pups. Uh, by the end of the summer, we did an, uh, another count, and we had 3,000 bats in there, which is significant. Environmentalists say Supona Meadows is facing challenges on several fronts. Federal budget problems have put pressure on wildlife lands like this one. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service no longer has staff here on a full-time basis. Three years ago, this refuge was de-staffed and is now considered a satellite of the Cape May Wildlife Refuge. Volunteers now monitor the preserve and say they've seen habitat destroyed by all-terrain vehicles and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service buildings vandalized. If you think about the millions of dollars that we have spent protecting and buying and preserving land, and then we don't invest the money in maintaining it, what, what service have we done to the American people? What, what, how are we taking care of that investment that we've made for them? You wouldn't buy a house and then not fix the hole in the roof. So you don't buy a refuge to preserve biodiversity and then not provide the funds to manage it. There are efforts underway to preserve land buffering Sapana. Last year, environmentalists defeated an effort to build a Walmart superstore on a farm right next door. What's so special about Sapana Meadows is 
there is this great mosaic of habitats, but we have to do more to protect the, the vulnerable uplands, which are often so often targeted by development. Blake says sea level rise caused by global warming is a reality along the Delaware Bay and River. If you take a boat anywhere along the Delaware River and Bay, the first thing you're going to see is ghost forest. You know, thousands of acres of, uh, of tall trees that have no foliage on them that are, uh, that are a direct result of sea level rise. The Littoral Society and other groups are now working to preserve this farm. They say the uplands could become the new coastal wetlands if some global warming predictions come true. For over four decades, viewers have been able to experience the breadth of the state in a way not available from any other media outlet. We have delivered a bountiful harvest of Jersey-centric programming, programming to the people of the Garden State. And we at NJN, behind the scenes and in front of the camera, would like to thank the people of New Jersey, the viewers and listeners, and the members of NJN for the chance to tell these stories and to cover the events which shape this state. Your support has made a difference. This is NJTV, a new place for New Jersey to turn for local news, arts, and culture, and the best of public television. Our commitment to you to create and broadcast programs that inform, inspire, entertain, and reflect the many communities that make up the great garden state. NJTV, we're for New Jersey. This is NJTV. Welcome to our program. We begin this evening with Timothy Garton-Ash. He is an Oxford historian.